Hi, this is Donimis 33. My brothers and sisters, we are still here awaiting the rapture. Now we are looking at the 15th of Av, uh, the Tuba Av. Um, this is um, a day of uh, weddings. Uh, as they say here, it says, um, Our sages proclaim the 15th of Av as one of the happiest days of the year when Jewish maidens will go out to dance, hoping to attract fitting suitors. Now, this is a, a mystery. Um, if you think about it, if we if we are to say a time that we think not, none of us are we're thinking that it's going to be on Tuba Av. It's not a, a day that we would be looking at. So we would look at the more um, traditional feast. Uh, we look at Passover. We look at uh, Pentecost. We look at Tabernacles. But Tuba Av is not a day most of us would be looking at. Now, I'm, I approach it differently because most people will say, oh, yeah, this is the marriage between the Lord and the church. It is, but it's also a day for marriages, marriages between men and uh, women. Now, let me just one second here. Now, this is what I, I put together. Now, this is First Corinthians 15.45. Verse 45. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Now, the Lord became the last Adam for our sake, for our benefit. This is because he's, he's bringing uh, order back to what it was at the very, very beginning, before the fall. Now, when you read Genesis 5, 1 and 2, as it says here, This book of the generations of Adam, in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him, male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. Do you see that there? The male and the female are called Adam. So when the Lord becomes the last Adam, it's because he is bringing uh, order back to mankind, whereby a complete man is made up of a male and female together. People can fight it all they want, but this is clearly revealed in the word. God is restoring marriages. And marriages are not temporary. They are eternal. You see, when you read Matthew 19, here in this, in this uh, text here, it says, The Pharisees also came to him, testing him, and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning, the he is himself. <laughs> he is the one that made us at the beginning. He said, uh, made, made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This is not temporary. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man. This is, this is the man. The, 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 not, this is not referring to a judge or a priest or whatever. This is referring to the man himself, the husband. Let not man separate. So there is no reason on earth for divorce. You see, the, the, the God designed the married covenant to be eternal. You see, my brothers and sisters, you see, like I wrote here, most believers don't believe that the Lord designed the married covenant to be eternal. The, this flawed reasoning is why many Christian men take taken up in the rapture, like Jacob, we spend seven years serving the Lord for a spouse. These men won't be able to enter the holy city, the new Jerusalem, otherwise. So this is what people are going to find out. That, you know, what you didn't do here on earth. Because God designed it that you're meant to acquire understanding, you know, labor. So that when you choose your spouse, you choose the right woman. Most people don't give it much thought. They see a pretty woman, yeah, she, she will do. They marry and they end up fighting like cats and dogs 
for 10, 30, 50 years. Even though they are Christians, they've not put in the work mm, to seek God for their spouses. Now, Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years. Have you noticed it's seven years? The tribulation is seven years. People think it's only seven years for uh, us to be away for, for the tribulation, but it's actually seven years for people, men and women, to be able to uh, get married. Possibly the men, the men you know, because the women just have to wait, but the men have to serve God. Wasn't Rachel wasn't serving you know, it wasn't the other way around. It's, it's one way. Uh, you know, so he said, now Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your young younger daughter, fulfill her week, and we will give you this one also for service, which you will serve with me still another seven years. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter, Rachel, as wife. We know that he married Leah also, but he, the, the plan originally was to marry uh, only one woman. Uh, that was Rachel. He says in you know say so here it says Israel served for a spouse and for a wife he tended sheep. Guys, if you if your idea of marriage is oh it's temporary or or you, you didn't really put much effort into choosing a spouse, you're gonna end up serving the Lord seven years in heaven for your covenant spouse. Look what he says here a gracious woman retains honor. Marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Now, look what it says here. Now, so, so you see that word there? A great woman retains honor. Remember that. She retains honor. How does she retain honor? Let's, let's read further. We'll come back to that. Know you not that the unrighteous shall, shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators nor adulterers, I'll inherit the kingdom of God. Now, adulterers here, I'm sorry guys, if, you're, if your marriage is not a covenant marriage, if you're, in a, if, you're in a, if, you, if you're as a man, you're married to a woman who already has a husband, that's adultery, you won't be taken into rapture. If you're a woman, the man you're with is somebody else's spouse, that's adultery, you'll be left. You won't inherit the kingdom of God. This is not me saying this, this is the word of God. If you're not married and you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend as fornication, you're not going in the rapture. Sorry, guys. Now, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. Now, when it says for the Lord, what does it mean? The body is for the marriage covenant. And the Lord for the body. And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Notice it links the body being for marriage to being raised up straight away. Hmm? And in, we know the body is for marriage because it says it so here. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and bones. For this reason. What reason? For the reason that we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Why would, does he need to be joined to his wife? So that he can become Adam, an image of the last Adam. And the last Adam is an image of... Of the first Adam, which is male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That is one man. This one flesh actually means one man. This is a great mystery. What you see, Paul didn't go into detail on this. He left it. It's a great mystery. That's why it's not well known. That's why more reason why a lot of people don't really put much. Um, work into choosing who they're going to marry. Hmm? If you do the work here, you, you, you won't have to spend seven years doing the work there. I mean, because you're, a lot of people's idea of marriage is, is a flawed one. They, they think it's temporary. Um, so some, you know, that's why a lot of people don't get married at all. Or some people do get married, but they married the wrong person. And they end up having to, you know, spend you know, 30 years fighting, arguing, not compatible. And then they divorce. If they divorce, you know, you shouldn't, men shouldn't even be, shouldn't even divorce. In fact, we are being commanded not to divorce. 
So if you've divorced and you you left the, your the woman, even though you might, she might not be your, your eternal companion, but you still need to be married for life. That's that's the reason why more effort should be put into choosing finding the 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 the, the person that God has appointed for you. If you do the work. God will lead you to your appointed spouse. How do you know you're married to your appointed spouse? If your marriage is heaven on earth, is it, you've married your appointed spouse. If you, if every day is a joy, every day is happiness, every day is fun, every day you're playing like children, you know, you hardly ever argue. There, there's a 99.9 percent chance that you married your covenant spouse. But if you're fighting every day, arguing every day, you know, and it's hell on earth. Chances are that you just married the wrong woman or wrong man and, you know, you're just hanging on and most likely the marriage will be dissolved. And as a man, you're going to have to work for your spouse because you didn't do the work. Hmm? I'm not going to blame, <laughs> blame the ladies. It's the men. You didn't do the work and you, cho- and you chose the wrong woman to marry. So you're going to have to work like Jacob did. See, these, these things are in scripture for a reason. People, this whole year, seven years, you work for seven years, you know, the thing is just there. No, the Lord is telling you, this is going to be what you have to do. Seven years working, doing, doing some, I don't know, whatever job it will be, but you're going to have to work seven years. And then that's the reason why the marriage supper is not at the beginning of the, it's not at the beginning. Notice it's at the end. When they say uh, the, the, uh, the, the bride has made herself ready, that's the what they're talking about. You see, she's made herself ready. Um, now the people who are going to be married and now they've worked They've now been uh, linked to their spouses and now they're ready to enter the city. You know, a lot of people are not going to be able to go into the city, New Jerusalem. Why would not be able to go in? Because you, uh, we, you cannot go in as a, as a single man. The glory is too much. You can't go in empty handed. You have to have your spouse with you to go into the city. A lot of people are going to find that out. That they, they, so you have to remain in the suburbs, in, in the countryside, where the glory is not as intense. You see, so people are going to find this out. They're going to think that, oh, you're going to have one straight into the throne room. No, you, you have to stay in the suburbs and work and acquire uh, on the understanding. Let me, let's read further. Okay. For, for we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but for the clothed, that mortality might be swallowed up by life that's what's going to swallow up mortality life what life are we talking about here let's see here look what it says in 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 first peter uh, 3 7 husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding husbands likewise dwell with them with, with, dwell with who with, with your wives with understanding giving honor to the wife see that word there giving honor to the wife did we not just read that about uh, a gracious woman retains honor. How does she retain it? By being happily married to her own husband, giving honor to the wife, as to the wicked vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. See that word there? In other words, the man has to understand that the married covenant is an eternal one. Hmm? I cannot be a king. If I'm not making my wife a queen, I can, and she cannot be a queen if she's not making me a king. So basically, you have to work at loving each other. So you have to understand that you, the the inheritance is joint, hairs to get. This is not temporary for those who think oh, marriage is just for here. This is it's eternal. This is this is forever. Hmm. So you in, so your inheritance is. What, what, do, what is this inheritance? That is the understanding that you've acquired, the understanding, the knowledge, the wisdom, the intelligence. All that is the glory. And then she, your, the wife, by you being with one wife, loving your own spouse, she, her honor is elevated. You are giving honor to her. She is your queen. Let's read it here in Revelation. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Notice the lamb's wife is a city, is the holy city. 
and he carried me away in the spirit to a, to a great high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The lamp is its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Do you see that there? The kings of the earth. Who are these kings? That's me and you. But notice it doesn't mention, uh, it doesn't say kings and queens. Why doesn't it say that? Because it's both of them, it's implied. The, this is, these are Adams, images of Adam, if you think about I me. Mean. So the kings, you know, they bring the glory. Their spouses bring the honor. Hmm? The men embody the glory. The wives embody the honor. You see, my brothers and sisters. So, and I just wrote it down here, that whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. You see, so my brothers and sisters, this is the word of God. Don't, you know, be sure that your marriage is a, is a covenant marriage. If it's not, you won't even make the cut. And it's not me saying this is what the word of God says. People can argue all they want that no, they're under grace. They've quoted uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, and therefore that covers all their sins while they continue to remain with somebody who's not their covenant spouse. And, you know, you think you're going to go in the rapture on the day of marriage? Hmm? Don't be deceived. Don't let anybody tell you, you know, that you, you, you don't worry, no matter, it doesn't matter. You can be on your fourth, fifth marriage. You're going to go into rapture. Just keep on pleading the blood. No. You cannot plead the blood unless you've repented. And, and unless you end adultery, you won't even go into rapture. And if your idea about marriage is not as it's supposed to be, please don't post uh, uh, the text and say, there's no marriage in heaven because, you know, that's, a, that's wrongly applying the word of God. Hmm? God is coming for... So you see that there, there is no the Lord and the bride without the bride being uh, the, the, the made up of men and women in a marriage covenant. We are images of, the, uh, of Adam. We are images of Adam. And Adam is male and female together. And that's what the Lord is bringing. God is restoring order back to what it was at the beginning. So it, it's befitting for the Lord to come for us on Tuba Av. Hmm? A day of love, a day of marriages. So my brothers and sisters, so we may just as well be uh, just a week away from going home. I pray that's the case. I pray that's the case, that we're just one week away from going home, you, you know. So my brothers and sisters, um, I pray that this uh, message, I hope this is my last message. I don't, want to, <laughs> I don't want to post any more messages. I hope this is the last one. But, you know, we cannot be here any longer. We know, you know the, tri the great tribulation is about to start. Everything is in place. You know, everything is in place. UFO revealing is in place. The 10 nations are going to be signed off next month. They, they're, they're signing the covenant uh, in, in, on September 18. So everything is ready, ready to go. So I, my brothers and sisters, I hope to see you in the kingdom and um, have a great day. God bless you. Bye for now.